rendition of how Leonardo DiCaprio won his Academy Award for The Revenant. Dish. 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 Oh, oh, God. You guys, just stop. Revenant, released in 2015. Jesus Christ, it's been three years? It feels like yesterday this movie was coming out and everyone was talking about it. This film is directed by Alejandro Iñárritu, who's also directed such films like 21 Grams, Babel, and Birdman. And this film stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Hardy, Will Poulter, and and Dom Held Gleese, Dom, 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 Dom Null, Dom Null? Dom Hanal, Dom Null, Mr. Gleason. Twas the early 1800s, and a trapper by the name of Hugh Glass leads a group of trappers through the unknown world of North America. But one day, Glass is mauled viciously by a bear and is left for dead. Fellow trapper John Fitzgerald does stay behind to look after Glass. However, wanting to get paid for his pelts that he's collected and for fear of the Native Americans in the area, Fitzgerald buries Glass in the dirt and kills his son who is waiting with him. But Glass, with one last stitch effort, climbs himself out of the grave and vows to seek vengeance on Fitzgerald. It's a very simple storyline that has breathtaking cinematography. If you ever question yourself as to should you see this film, you absolutely should just for the visuals alone. If you ever wanted to go see a film that would give you just nice ASMR triggers to fall asleep at night listening to the sounds of nature, see The Revenant. Because Inuritu takes his time just showing you the, the world that these folks are living in. The world that we are living in and that we take for granted or that we forgot just how beautiful and breathtaking it could be. That's really the main message behind this film. It's an exploration of man's relationship with Mother Nature. And the only way to really coexist on this planet is to accept Mother Nature, not fight against it. Because in the end, no matter how hard you try, Mother Nature will always win. You can try your weapons, you can try your medicine, but in the end, nature always gets you. So really, in the time that we have, why not just embrace the nature around us, as opposed to ignoring it or not taking care of it? That's really the big thing that Leo DiCaprio was talking about when he was accepting his Academy Award about how the film crew had to go to the farthest reach of this planet just to find places to film that had snow. Which is so depressing just thinking about it. Because if this film proves anything to you is that our world is a beautiful thing. There is so much beauty around us. If you would just stop and take a second to look around and appreciate it. And if you see baby bear cubs playing in the forest, run because the mother is always very close. And this film is loosely based on on like a, it's like a poem or a legend about Hugh Glass coming back to life after being left for dead and seeking revenge. This film though, I'm pretty sure adds the ante and has his son being killed by Fitzgerald, just feeding into his rage and his drive for revenge. Which is a very good call by the screenwriter and the director because at this guy just got mauled by a bear and was left for dead and then was coming back for revenge because you left me. I mean, I, I was really on Tom Hardy's side. We have Native Americans all around us who want to kill us for being the white men invading their land. It's getting colder. Our food and water is running out. Yeah, I'm gonna leave you behind and I'm gonna fend for myself. The dude had a slit throat by the bear. I mean, Come on! But adding in that Fitzgerald kills his son, again, adds to revenge, adds to the drive, and you start buying into Glass's drive to come back and kill this guy. And what a performance by Leonardo DiCaprio. He grunted, and he grunted more, and then he, uh, I think he yelled? But then he grunted. Really, I would have given him the Academy Award just for what the director made him endure during this film as opposed to actually playing this character. Yeah, just hop into the inside of that horse for me, will ya? And then we're also gonna have you be molested by this bear and you're gonna be out in the woods for several, several months just being dirty, cold, wet, disgusting, and uh, yeah, here's a golden statue for you. Yeah, really, when Leonardo DiCaprio won that year, it was really a Lifetime Achievement Award because the dude definitely should have won it for Wolf of Wall Street. My God, just 
why didn't that happen? But right behind him, too, was Tom Hardy. Just a great character, a great story. I, I love his portrayal of his character. He kind of comes across as a sociopath. No empathy, no connection to really anyone around him. Just he doesn't go out seeking to kill people. But you start to find out where this guy is coming from. He was, like, halfway scalped by Native Americans several years in the past. His story about God being a squirrel and that he ate that some bitch and just... Yeah, Tom Hardy, I, actually, I think, deserved an Oscar over Leonardo DiCaprio for this film. But really, the big thing about this film is its cinematography. Again, it's absolutely, it's stunning, it's mind-blowing, just how simple, how simple it is. This film, they say, or at least they claim, was shot with all natural light, which if that is the case... We live in a gorgeous world, and there are shots in this film where you are, you're watching a waterfall and you're thinking, oh, that's very beautiful. And then the camera pans over and you realize, oh my God, it's hanging over a waterfall. How are you getting this shot? And we get tons of what appears to be one long tracking shot throughout this film, which the year prior with Birdman in your Atu was really commended for. If you haven't seen Birdman, it's shot basically all seemingly as one continuous shot. There are no obvious breaks in between days, it's just, going from place to place and from scene to scene. And you do see influences of that here. And I love that camera trick about these extended long takes and everyone is trying to copy that nowadays. But you know, you know what? I, I'm always gonna love it. So yeah, please keep trying to copy it and maybe you'll do a good job. But this film is, is absolutely excellent. It is. It is a slow burn. Don't go into this film thinking that you're gonna get some gripping story or some gripping acting that's gonna keep you engaged throughout the entire thing. Mainly the thing that keeps you engaged is all the visuals and the cinematography. But I really think the climax of this film is well worth it. This is a revenge story. So you know that we're gonna get a showdown in the end and that fight is... Oh, that's a fist pump moment. Really, guys, if you have never seen The Revenant, I absolutely recommend you check it out. Not a film you're going to go back to on a regular basis, but it's definitely a nice one-time viewing. Leo DiCaprio, Tom Hardy, they give, they give excellent performances here. A lot of grunting, a lot of noises, a lot of masculinity, but it's a really nice representation of what North America looked like and felt like back in the early 1800s. And the relationship of the white man with the Native American. And the atmosphere, you're just, you're sucked into it. Just everything is so, it's so wet, it's so dirty. You start feeling colder as you watch this movie progress. Which when a film completely immerses me into the atmosphere of the film, it's, it's definitely a high score. I'm gonna give The Revenant four and a half out of five Blu-rays. I think I see blue. He looks glorious. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part in my video where I randomly select which movie I'm gonna be watching next, so let's take a look. And oh boy, The Shining. Here's Johnny. I wonder how many people I'm gonna offend with this, but I've actually never seen The Shining. What? He's a film reviewer and he's never seen The Shining? No. I have never seen The Shining, at least all the way through. I've seen the big cinematic moments in the film, but never watched the entire thing. Not the biggest horror guy. I haven't seen a lot of the big horror staples out there. Plus, it's a Stephen King rendition, which I'm not the biggest fan of. However, I do know that he did not like this version of The Shining because it's absolutely, completely different from his written work, as I came to find out when I watched Ready Player One. And that whole scene didn't happen in that book at all, but I still enjoyed it. But I do know here's John I do know the red rum, red rum. Kids in horror films, we don't need those. But that's why this channel exists, is that I get to watch these films that I should have seen by now and that I haven't. So you know what? Thank you, Random Generator. And for all those people out there who are like, oh, you've never seen it before, what are you doing? Just relax gonna watch it for next time. So everyone, have you seen The Revenant? What did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this channel, please comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And when you're done commenting, please like and subscribe to my channel so you know the next time I post my next movie review. And if you have a recommendation of a film that you want me to review here on this channel, please leave your comment below this video or go to my Facebook page, my Instagram, my Twitter, leave your recommendation there. If I have access to it, I will watch it do my review on here and give you a shout out on the channel. So everyone, I will see you next time with my review of The Shining. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.